Hey everybody, Shane R. Monroe here, and on Reddit, I found a very interesting post. Somebody was trying to figure out a way to connect two devices by Ethernet and allow them to do a local install across a wired connection without using their Wi-Fi. So they want to get all the power and performance out of having an Ethernet connected device, but they want to be able to have these devices talk to each other. Now you can't just plug a cable in between them, that doesn't work. You can't just put a hub in between them because that doesn't work. What you can do is what I set up here. For about 35 bucks, you can buy a special travel router. Now this travel router is special only because it has multiple local area network ports. So if you look back here on the back, there's a WAN that you could plug into say your network and then share with others, but we didn't want to do that. We want this to be on the Wi-Fi so that it can reach out to Steam and authenticate that the other device owns the game so that it can be locally transferred. But what we really want are these two devices to talk to each other over a wired cable, not over Wi-Fi. But we still need Wi-Fi because Steam needs Wi-Fi in order to authenticate. So I did some research. These are relatively uncommon. Most will have one WAN and one LAN. That doesn't work out for us. We need two LANs. So this is a local area network that is connected via Wi-Fi over to my router. So when these guys reach out to Steam and say, hey, this guy wants to install Dying Light on this machine here, is are you allowed to? Do these Are these both signed in? Is this user the same as this user? Whatever. So there's an authentication process, but we want that speed. So this is what we got going on. You can see here that on this Steam Deck, I am wired up, right? And you can tell right up here, you can see right here, it's a wired connection. It's wired. If we take a look, wired, it's not hooked up to Wi-Fi, not hooked up to Wi-Fi, not hooked up to Wi-Fi. Hmm, perfect. Okay. So on the other side, you'll also notice that, over, oops, you'll also notice that over here, it's saying, hey, you can play this game remotely without installing. You know why that's the case? These machines can see each other and they this machine knows that this machine has Dying Light installed on it. So it could do a remote play and it's gonna do it over for ethernet and ethernet. Both of these machines, if, I, if you were to look over here, you'll also see that I've got plugged into ethernet. Okay, so I realize this is very esoteric, right? How many people are actually gonna to wanna to do this? You might be surprised. A lot of people do not want to wire their house. They do not want to run ethernet. I've got ethernet running all over my home. Everything that I can plug into ethernet, I do it because of the speed, stability, cleanliness of the connection. And for those who are suffering with slow Wi-Fi, poor Wi-Fi, oversaturated Wi-Fi, this is a solution. Pretend that this, one of these is a computer, right? This was easier to do on film other than hooking up my whole computer. Um, but you can tell we're both on ethernet. We're both going through here. These devices will cross talk very quickly. And when, cause Steam's online right now, Steam can say, hey, this other machine has this game. I would like to do a local transfer. Yes, let's just say yes, it's verified. Okay, so this, is, this has been installed here. It needs to be installed here. So let's do the install. I'll do it on my local drive. Yep, I accept the Eula, the EULA. Okay, starting the download. Reserving space. Let's hop over to the download screen. Transferring game on local network from device Steam. Uh, it's just, it's gonna go to the next piece. It's downloading requisites right now. Okay, now it's downloading some requisites. I had to change where the requisites are. That's why there was a camera jump. So it's going to download requisites like Proton 10 Beta, blah, blah, blah. Now it's gonna actually go grab the game. Now the shader caches, it looks like it's downloading that maybe from the internet. It's, it's hard to tell because it doesn't give you an indicator saying that it's transferring the game. My money says that it doesn't realize these two devices are identical. So it is reaching out over Wi-Fi to grab the um, pre-cached shaders. But now when the game starts going, Oh yeah, hosting network transfer, we are on ethernet, transferring game files on local network from Steam Deck, and it is kicking butt and taking names. So this is exactly what we're talking about. So in this scenario, let's go, let's recap this because it gets a little confusing. I have two Wi-Fi only devices that I want to be able to move large games across. 
you can't do that over Wi-Fi. Well, I mean, you can do it over Wi-Fi, but the specific ask was, I want to be able to plug in a cable and make these move as fast as possible. The way we're doing that is with a travel hub that allows for a local area hub, essentially, right? So we have two cables, one for this one, one for that one, but Steam has to be available. And these machines have to be able to get IP addresses, right? So by nature of this being basically a repeater over Wi-Fi, this becomes another little router. So this machine reached out to my router and says, I need an IP address. This one reached out through the ether, uh, through Ethernet over the Wi-Fi and said, I need an IP address. They're online, but between the two of them are fixed cables for maximum speed. And just to make sure that we're above board here, I went ahead and shut this guy off and stopped the transfer and I resumed transferring over Wi-Fi. And it's very clear I'm getting about half the speed. So yes, this setup is definitely making a difference. So what we're getting is, the and I don't know what these cables are rated, I just pulled these out of a drawer. I just wanted you to see the process. So yes, for about 35 bucks, that's what I paid. Link in the description below. You order from Amazon using my affiliate link, I get a couple of bucks. Uh, so that's how you do it. So now, if you don't want to run Ethernet across your house to your Steam Deck, you don't want to run Ethernet to your PC, they're in different rooms, uh, whatever, you just grab your deck, go over by your PC, plug this in between. Now, I didn't show you setting this thing up and connecting to my router and all that stuff, but that's outside the scope. I just wanted you to see we are now in a local area network over fast Ethernet and we're doing a game transfer while still allowing for Steam to communicate over Wi-Fi to get what it needs to authenticate that this is allowed. And that's it. So yes, it can be done. Yes, it's a little tricky, it's a little esoteric, and it's gonna cost you a few bucks. But for those of you that have absolutely horrible Wi-Fi, uh, and you've got a PC game loaded with games, you wanna get it over to the deck, you wanna do it over ethernet, this is how you do it. That's it. Uh, listen, if you like what we're doing here, like, subscribe, hit the bell. We got only got like 8% of you are subscribed. I would love it. And thank you so much for subscribing. Share this video with others. Um, do whatever it takes to help get the algorithm to pay attention to me, right? I'm a little tiny channel and it's a big C out there. So thanks so much for watching. I'm Shane Armonroe. Take care and we will see you next time.